physics for anesthetics demystified and uh, today we'll be talking about force flow and pressure and its applications in theaters we know that pressure is a product of flow and resistance and we also know that pressure is nothing but force acting over unit area and hence uh, force is a product of pressure times the area So we can actually uh, balance a uh, large pressure acting over smaller area uh, with a smaller pressure acting over larger area. Now this principle is used in a lot of places in the machines and components of machines. And one of them uh, which is used by everyone day in day out is an APL valve. So let's look at the components of uh, an APL valve, how it works. Uh, what is the scientific basis or principle uh, of this component? So if you look at an APL valve, it's nothing but a T-piece. You got the machine end, you got the patient end, and you got the expert port. Now the expert port is important because what we have is a disc with a stem uh, sitting on a knife edge, and there's this. A spring uh, which acts on this uh, diaphragm or a disc and the force on the force of the spring can be adjusted by the screw top you can screw it in to increase the force or you can uh, reduce the force by unscrewing it so when the expired gases actually uh, come out from the patient end they act on this disc so basically they generate a uh, pressure uh, which is uh, because of the flow of the gases and the resistance within the tubings. So like we have said before, uh, the pressure generated uh, is uh, nothing but the product of the uh, flow and resistance. And this acts on the disc and the force acting uh, over the disc area uh, by the uh, supplied by the spring uh, creates a, a pressure which is, has to be balanced uh, by the pressure created by the expiratory flows. So basically when <coughs> the pressure generated by the flows, expiratory flow exceeds the uh, pressure generated by the spring on the disc, uh, it will uh, get lifted up and the gases uh, will be vented out. So basically the, uh, the spring force and uh, acting on the diaphragm, the area of the diaphragm, uh, is balanced by the uh, flow with expired gases and the resistance within the tubing. And when the, uh, this pressure which generated by the flow exceeds the spring force, uh, it will get lifted up. Uh, this is a pressure reducing valve. Uh, you can see them uh, on the uh, main flows or the uh, pipelines or you can actually see them on the back of the machines on the cylinders. So how does the pressure regulator work? So if you look at the pressure regulator basically it consists of uh, two uh, different uh, units. So you got the uh, two chambers, there's a high pressure chamber and a low pressure chamber. Now in the chambers, they are connected uh, via a disc. And uh, this disc uh, has a large area and the lower part has got a smaller area. Now that is a high pressure chamber and that's a low pre uh, pressure chamber. And uh, you got a spring uh, which uh, is uh, supplies a force uh, which is uh, transmitted to both so that's the common force acting on the large and the small uh, uh, diaphragms and so this is the high pressure chamber on which side you have the uh, very high pressure which generated by the cylinders 
So this acts, this pressure acts on a smaller area. And this is balanced uh, by a larger diaphragm, area of larger diaphragm by smaller pressure. So the pressure gets reduced uh, in, uh, in the low pressure chamber. Okay, so this is a basic uh, uh, pressure regulator. Uh, the force uh, is normally preset in the pressure regulators depending on uh, whether it is an oxygen uh, pressure regulator or the nitrous oxide pressure regulator. Yeah, this is a Antinox uh, valve, uh, which is used for pain relief. So how how is this different? So the first part of the Antinox uh, valve is, is just a pressure regulator, like we have just explained, and that is connected to the Antinox. So this is basically two. It is called two stage pressure regulator, but the second part is not really a pressure regulator, but it's a demand valve. A demand valve, uh, uh, so this end is connected to the patient, and this is open to the atmosphere. And what we have here is a tilting disc mechanism. So this is a variable flow or demand flow valve. Uh, so normally the outlet of the low pressure chamber is closed. This is a normal so when we connect it to the patient and the patient starts breathing and okay, what happens is the disc is lifted up and the gases now will flow uh, from the cylinder to the patient. And then as soon as the patient stops uh, breathing in, the uh, disc will go back to his normal position and close the thing. The other place where this principle is used is in oxygen failure devices. And this is just absolutely opposite of a, a oxygen pressure regulator. So normally that is our high pressure chamber, and there's a low pressure chamber. Here it's different. Here, a high uh, pressure is applied on the disc, so it lifts it up and closes the outlet. And uh, the the so-called inlet uh, we had in the high pressure chamber, which is now a low pressure chamber, is connected uh, to a whistle, and uh, this is called a reduced whistle. Uh, so when this pressure actually drops, what happens is the, the disc will actually move down and the gases will flow and the whistle, you'll hear the whistle. Uh, this is how it looks like in real life. So you got a cylinder, uh, auxiliary cylinder, uh, which is actually uh, filled by the gases from the pipeline out from the cylinder. And this is a whistle, okay, and this is the valve. Okay, normally so it is shut down when, when the high pressure is there. It acts on this disc and it actually closes the valve to the whistle. Uh, so this is all filled with the same gases as that are in the pipeline on the cylinder. So uh, when the uh, pressure drops in the system, okay, so what will happen is, is the disc will actually move okay and uh, the auxiliary cylinder will power the whistle and you will hear the whistle and this will keep going on till the pressure drops to almost 6 psi so you hear a whistle and you know that the pressure is dropping so this is a ox uh, oxygen reservoir uh, powered whistle uh, this is whistle is called richie's whistle and uh, you can actually lift the top up and you can see that is the auxiliary cylinder and uh, that is the Ritchie's whistle. You can actually see the holes on the whistle here. Okay, so that is powered by the oxygen cylinder. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this uh, lecture and I'll bring in more lectures from time to time.